we're going to be covering textiles and I'm going to be going over some of the textiles that I often use when I'm designing in my special occasions business. We're going to go over tips and tricks on how to best use these fabrics. We're going to be learning how to create our own fabric sample book and design our own fabric textiles. So let's get started. To begin our fabric construction module of our textiles lesson, we're going to start by just going over some of the types of weaves that are used to construct fabric designs. First, we have the plain weave, and as the name suggests, it's a plain, simple weave. It has this very even over and under pattern. The next we have is the satin weave, and then it gets its name because once these are these strands are put together, they have this sort of sheen satin look to them. And as you can see here, some of the warping is longer and then over, longer than over, whereas the plain weaves, they have shorter distances in between. The next we have the herringbone weave, and as you know, herringbone is a pattern within itself, and it just gives off this zigzag pattern here, as you can see. And how that pattern is created is just sort of this staggered overlapping pattern that eventually gives way to this decoration, as you can see, the zigzag. So it's not as staggered as you see here. It's a little more tightly where the staggers go cross. So in the satin weave, you see it goes down length, lengthwise. And during the herringbone, we see it go across width. The next we have is the twill weave. And it's a diagonal tool weave is made by the weft yarn going under two warp yarns, then over another two, with the pattern moved one yarn across each time. So you can see it creates these sort of tightly pulled together diagonal lines, also known as bias lines. And they're often very bumpy and they're created using these sort of lines. So as you can see, there are shorter cross grains that overlap exposing more of the lengthwise grain. And that's how you get the twill weave. The next is the warp knit and the name suggests is more of a knitting and it's just a series of loops and latches. As you can see here, they overlap and create these intricate loop designs. And lastly, we have the weft knit. Another form of knitting is made the same way as knitting by hand on needles, and it uses one yarn that runs horizontally. So as you can see, instead of here, where it runs a little more diagonally in the warp knit, in the weft knit, as the name suggests, it goes across horizontally, but still maintaining those looping patterns. And these are just some of the weaves that are used when you're constructing, when fabric is being constructed and woven together. Obviously when it's spread out, these are more magnified images and illustrations of what it looks like close up. But when it's pulled together, these little images here show you what it looks like by itself. So when we enter into the designing portion of our garment, so this is after we've created the sketch, and now we need to create our sample garment or our tool. We need to first drape it or cut out the pattern using what is commonly known as a muslin. The muslin that I'm using here is usually a tan muslin and it's very lightweight, kind of transparent as you can see as I lay it here. And it's just something that is easy to mark and it's usually really good at folding and those different kinds of things. I do recommend that any design that you're doing, you wanna make sure that the fabric you're using as a sample fabric is as close as possible to the actual fabric you're going to use. So for example, if I was making a silk dress, I would not use this type of muslin because it's going to fold differently, it's going to have different elements of stretch and give that this doesn't have. So you don't really want to use this when you're working with certain fabrics because it might not pass on to the pattern as well or the actual garment. So I always say that you want to make sure whatever fabric you're using as your sample is as close to the actual fabric that you'll be using for the garment. Even if it's like a slightly cheaper quality, you want to make sure it has similar elements. With that being said, this can be used for most designs, especially when you're talking about cotton. If you want to use a cotton toil, this would be perfect because it has some similar elements to cotton. As you can see, I have a strip of cotton here. So they have a similar 
feeling similar fold capabilities so this wouldn't be too off if my actual fabric was going to be this and i'm using this as a tool then it wouldn't be completely off so it's also important when you are designing, especially if you're draping or when you're laying out your patterns, to know the lengths of the grains. Why is that important? Because if you cut on the wrong grain length or the wrong weft or warp, it can drastically affect the way the garment looks in the finishing stages. And you might notice awkward pulling in places and not be able to quite figure out where that pulling is coming from is because at some point during the cutting or the draping phase, you cut on the wrong grain. So how do we identify grains? So the first one is going to definitely be the selvage. And this is the area here that looks a little bit more finished. It's often done in the manufacturing phase to close up the fabric so that there's not a lot of fraying. So we call this area the selvage. And I am going to mark that and label it i may be spelling that wrong there it is okay so that's this area here again it's the raw air it's the the more finished area of your fabric then we have the raw edge, and the name simply states exactly what it is. It's the edge that is not as finished, and you see more fraying on the edges, and it's not as clean as the selvage area. So we just simply call that the raw edge. Okay. And this is going to help us quite a lot, like I said, when we are cutting out our patterns and we're laying them down, and especially when we're draping as well, because you want to make sure when you initially put that garment to drape that it is exactly where it needs to be. And I'll show you an example of that very shortly. Okay, so now that we have that, we can move on to the grain lines and this is often called in school we called it cross grain and uh, lengthwise grain we can also call it the weft and the warp as well as the bias so the weft is usually going lengthwise so i'm just going to use this green to highlight it And you'll see these, if you're doing the storeboard patterns, you'll see these lines and you'll be like, well, what is that line there for? That's what it's for. It's to make sure that when you're laying out your pattern on the fabric, that the fabric is going lengthwise and it, it's adhering to these lines. So we'll also call that the weft. Okay. And another way to sort of identify how that how you come upon the lengthwise grain is you do a simple pull test. The lengthwise grain has almost no give. It's usually very taut and it goes along the center front or the center back of a garment. As you can see, it has almost no give, no stretch. So now we move on to the warped or also known as cross grain. And again, when you're laying out a pattern, whether it's a store board pattern or when you're creating your own patterns, you wanna make sure you include these lines. That way you remind yourself so that when you're laying out the fabrics, you know exactly where you're laying them. Some, there are so many markings that go into creating a garment, so many little details that I find myself writing down everything like this goes here fold this this way because sometimes you'll get so caught up in the design that you'll forget and then you're like why is this not looking the way i want it to look and then you're like oh i forgot to do that step so i literally when i'm doing my patterns and my tools i always make sure that or my muslin markups whatever you like to call it i always make sure that i do as much labeling as possible and this is also called the warp and how do we know the difference, the distinctions between lengthwise and the cross grain is now we have, you see that stretch? 
that's not a stretch you're gonna get here. So if you wanna pull this way, in school we used to also take a small pin and pull one direction and this direction just to kind of let us know. You can also just simply mark it with a pencil. But I, it's, the first giveaway is definitely this. So lengthwise, you're not getting as much stretch. If any, cross grain, there's all that stretch. And then finally, we have bias. So if you remember from I Know Your Tools segment, this is what I use to cut that bias tape because the bias has the maximum amount of stretch. I'm just gonna label that. You even have dresses that are called a bias cut dress. And you're like, well, why is it called that? It's because it's cut. The fabric, the pattern is laid on the bias and cut for maximum stretch. So here we go. Look at that. So we don't want to get the bias. One way to remind yourself what the bias is is to know that it's always going to go diagonally. The cross screen or the warped is always going to go horizontally and it stretches, but not nearly as much as the bias that has the most stretch. And then the lengthwise, it is vertically and it's almost no stretch. So this is just basically how we determine how we're going to lay our patterns out. It's very helpful during draping and it helps with the construction of the fabric so that we know, okay, how am I going to put my garment together? What are some key things I need to know? This is kind of paramount to making sure you understand where everything is supposed to be. So I definitely encourage you get a square of muslin. And as you're learning how to do this and you're teaching yourself and you're practicing, I definitely would say create something like this for yourself. This square is made, uh, I would say it's about seven and five eighths by, I'm gonna say by 10. So it's not a huge, you can make a much smaller piece, but if you wanna get the full effect, I would say make it about this big. And as we go on to create our fabric sample book, you might wanna leave this in here for yourself as a reference.